So since this maximum value is coming at point B, we will say that this is the solution to this problem. Now, this is a very important analysis. So, better we see that the solution, the one that maximizes my revenue, I achieve that at point B and my x1 is 5 and my x2 is 22.5. Now, just try to think about it. When I talk about point B, just look here, huh? When I talk about point B, which are the two constraints which are met with equality? Konse do constraints and jo point B pe intersect kar rahe? Butter and flour. Sugar to nahi intersect kar rahe na. So, when you are on a line, dhyan se samajho. You would have done this in microeconomics also, right? When you are on a line, on line, when you are suppose on the budget line, it means you are exhausting your entire income. So, if you just go back to your budget lines, but if this is your budget line. When I am on the budget line, I use my entire income. When I am below the budget line, I am using my income partial. Same is the concept here. If you are on the line, it means you are exhausting that resources completely. But this is my sugar constraint, now. So, I am inside the sugar constraint. I am in a point, am I maximized at a point where I am inside this sugar constraint. Are you getting it? And inside the sugar constraint means that I am satisfying it with inequality. I am not completely using the sugar. I am only using some part of the sugar. So, where I am maximizing this point B that I am talking about, this point B is that point where I am completely exhausting the flour, where I am completely exhausting the butter, but I am not completely exhausting the sugar. I am at a point which is inside the constraint. Sugar ka constraint ye tha. So, I am inside this constraint. So, sugar is not completely being utilized. It is only being partially utilized. So, this is very important conclusion that at point B, you see that it is the intersection of flour and butter. And since it is the intersection of flour and butter, it means that you are going ahead and you are doing a complete utilization. Because you are line per ho. And on the line means it is an equality, right? So, complete utilization of flour and butter. And it automatically means that there is an incomplete utilization of sugar. Sugar completely utilized nahi ho rahi hai. And in order to go ahead and to show you that, what we can do is the following. So, better we will go back to the amount of cake A and cake B produced. So, what is my X1 star? 5. What is X2 star? 22.5. Each unit of cake A was using 3 kgs of the flour. I am producing 5 units of cake A. So, it will use 15 kgs of flour. Each unit of cake B was using 6 kgs of flour. I am producing 20, I am producing 22.5 kgs of cake B. So it will produce 135. It will use 135 units of flour. Cake A is using 15 units of flour. Cake B is using 135 units of flour. So in total, I am able to use 150 units of the flour. What about clear? Now, each unit of cake A requires 1 kg of sugar. I am producing 5 units of cake A. So, it will require 5 kgs of sugar. Each unit of cake B requires 0 0.5 kgs of sugar. 
I am producing 22.5 kgs of cake B. So it will use 11.25 kgs of sugar. So you can see that 6, 5 plus 11.25. But this is not completely exhausted. Now I have 22 kgs of sugar. I am only using 16.25 kgs of sugar. So this is not completely exhausted. Now look at the third one. Each kg of cake A requires 1 kg of butter. I am producing 5 cakes. So it will use 5 sugar, uh, 5 butter. If this also requires 1 butter. I am producing 22.5. So this will be 22.5. 5 plus 22.5 is 27.5. That is the butter I had. So this sugar is not completely exhausted. The sugar, I am left up with some surplus sugar. I am not able to exhaust that completely. But I am exhausting the flour and I am exhausting the butter completely. And that is also shown through the same graph where I attain my maxima at point B. So at B, the lines that are intersecting are that of butter and flour. So, these two resources must be completely utilized. Is this clear better?